Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm John Hyatt. Um, you normally see me uh, with Gina McDonald at the McDonald Insurance Agency table out there. Gina's been a part of the GCCA for a very long time and in the child care business for 30 years. But I have a side gig. And my side gig is as a corporate trainer, executive coach, and relationship coach. And I've been doing this business in Marietta now for about five years. The, my background in leadership comes from 27 years in the U.S. Army. I'm a retired lieutenant colonel. Um, so uh, to all of you who have served or have family members who have served or support those who serve, thank you very much. Very much appreciated. So I have a coaching practice, and so I'm available to help you uh, either personally or more importantly professionally to take the leadership in your child care center up to the next level um, because we always have an opportunity to improve and grow our leadership it's one thing that we are never done with never done so I can do that in a myriad of ways through lunch and learns just come in at lunchtime or another time with presentations I can do seminars and workshops or I can give formal presentations like this at any time if they'll be beneficial. So, now that I've done the commercial up front, let's get to leadership. This uh, seminar, the whole purpose is to help you show up available for leadership. And when we do that, we create conditions for success at all levels within our child care center. Here's the deal. Poor or absent leadership has a huge cost to your operation. You lose time, you lose energy, you lose emotional energy. You lose opportunities to engage with parents, kids, each other, to build that collaboration and teamwork that's necessary to be effective at your center. So there's a huge cost. That's why I was asked to present this uh, to you today uh, by the GCCA is like how can we mitigate the cost of leadership and instead really seize the opportunity by improved leadership out there. So my goal is to just to take your leadership one degree forward today and I guarantee that there will be something in this presentation that will hit you and you'll you'll realize the value of it. But I'm just looking for that one degree shift of movement, and I guarantee you're going to, experience it, going to experience it today. So let me tell you a story about my leadership. Hey, it was 1969, Christmas morning, and I came down and I tore open a bunch of boxes that had my name on it. And what did my parents give me? Military surplus gear, a helmet, a belt, an ammo pouch, okay? And that's my brother's BB gun right there that he got for Christmas, all right? At a very young age, I knew a military career was for me. I mean, no joking, at seven years old, I was like, I'm going to be a soldier. That desire developed and grew, and General Patton soon became my hero. I became an avid Patton fan. The movie, the books, his autobiographies, everything I could get. And I was fascinated with Patton's leadership style. He had a certain leadership style that was bold, passionate, committed. He didn't take anything for granted. He was always leading from the front. And he played a very crucial role in the Second World War uh, to help us be victorious. But you know what? He had some weak sides. He had some parts of his leadership style that made him show up unavailable for leadership. Remember when he slapped the soldier in the face? Huge impact. Huge impact. So, every leader has strengths and weaknesses. We're all human. We're supposed to. That's okay. Now, fast forward. I'm in the reserves here in Atlanta working for a company on a military contract, and the military contract closes. So I had a year left in my reserve time. I spent 15 years on active duty, 12 in the reserves here in Atlanta as an instructor. So I'm like, this was 2011. Hmm, I know what I'll do. I'll go spend my last year in Afghanistan, put my boots on the ground and do time over there. 
So I went to interview for a job. It was with a uh, part of the Army Acquisition Corps who was delivering radio technology over there so the soldiers could communicate and share real-time video. And I walked in and met with the boss, and the boss uh, was, he, he was, he wanted to hire me. He said, hi Ed, I want to hire you. And I said, sir, I want to be honest with you, I'm just an infantry officer. Okay, I'm just working with the soldiers. I don't know anything about all this fancy smancy technology. He goes, Hyatt, that's not what I'm hiring you for. My program is in, uh, is in tough times. The person who's been over there has, been, has done a crappy job. My morale of my team is down. We're behind schedule, over budget. None of our stakeholders, uh, we don't have a good relationship with any of our stakeholders. I said, sir, you tell me to take the hill, I can take the hill, okay? So I got over there, and in my very first meeting with my team, these were 75 civilians now, not military. These were civilian military contractors, most of them prior service over there, who were out going from, stations, from base to base out there in the middle of the desert to install this technology. Very professional guys. And as I was getting briefed on what was happening, and I got angry. Ah, oh, I've had a little Patton moment. I didn't slap anybody, <laughs> but the tone of my voice was very commanding, very directive, okay, and just that type of energy. And when I had that experience and I, actually, and I said the words, I don't remember the exact words, I remember the energy that I felt. I knew in an instant I had disrespected the team, I had certainly disrespected myself because that type of leadership style was inappropriate. From that time forward, I knew I didn't have to use that type of style with my team. They were mature, they were professionals, they got it. They wanted to solve the problems. They wanted things to be better. So I made a decision at that moment that I would start to show up available for leadership. Using that commanding style, I was unavailable. I'm going to tell you more about that. Everybody say, show up available. Show up. One more time, more energy. Show up, show up available. That's what we're going to talk about today. Showing up available is about being open, available, ready and willing and able to respond, not react, to respond to situations that are going on. And this is a principle you can use, I'm telling you, take this phrase and take it home and use it in with your spouse, with your kids. Hey, I'm showing up available. Oh, we're not, are we feeling unavailable today? All right, because unavailable is about being closed. Now there can be a lot of reasons why I'm unavailable. And here's the thing, it's all about thoughts, feelings, words, actions, and skill sets. I can be unavailable because my thoughts and beliefs are not aligned with what I really want. Or I've had a belief that's been around for a long time that just doesn't serve me, but I keep thinking it does, okay? Feelings and emotions can make us unavailable. Anger is a big one. Jealousy is a big one. Um, insecure is our big emotions. That role. They play a very helpful role. But when we're feeling those things, we're unavailable for what's going on. Maybe a conversation, maybe solving a problem, maybe working with a child, see? Um, and then words, words have power. I can be unavailable with my words. I'm always negative, I'm pessimistic, I complain. I think of reasons why we can't do things. That's unavailable with words. Actions and behaviors, same thing. Same thing, I can be unavailable or available in my actions. Skill sets, I can want to be available in all those things. But let's say I lack a certain skill. Speaking skill, presentation skill, decision making skill, problem solving skill, communication skill, okay? Those things can be learned, they can be developed. And so those are the ways that we can either show up available or unavailable with what's going on around us. Now. There are a bunch of leadership role models out there. Many, 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 many types. These are just a few. And great leaders are made, they're not born. Each one of the individuals in these pictures came from very different, very unique circumstances 
and they weren't all at the top of the game the day they were born. They worked hard, they overcame things, they grew and learned. And as a result, each one of them became a great leader. Think of a great leader that you know of right now. Who is a great leader or a leadership role model for you? Why are they a, a role model? What characteristics or qualities are they available for? How might that, they might be unavailable? It's a great exercise, something to think about. And of course, we know leadership can show up in all sorts of different roles. Parents, teachers, coaches, political leaders, family, corporate, the daycare center, the owner, the director, the assistant director, team leaders, teachers, bus drivers, okay? The cook, hey, the cook is the leader there in the kitchen, right? They're making things happen, darn right. Everybody is a leader. And so here's the good news. All of you are already great leaders. Everybody say, I am a great leader. Louder. You know why? Muhammad Ali said, I am the greatest. I said it before I ever knew that I was. So I want you to take away from this today that you already are a great leader, a great owner, a great director, a great teacher a great role model, a great influencer, that you are already that. And all we're doing here today in the workshop and what you're going to do after is keep learning how to optimize your leadership skills. So what is leadership really? Somebody give me an example of what you think leadership is. Shout it out. Guiding. Example. Guiding. What's that? Motivating. Motivating. The ability to get things done. It's an action word, right? It's action. Here's one of my, I met John Maxwell. I have a John Maxwell certification. Who's heard of John Maxwell? A lot of people have. He's very predominant in the world of Fortune 500 leadership consulting. He's written over 70 books on business leadership. And he says leadership is influence. Nothing more nothing less. I really like that definition because it's true. Can I influence for good? Can I influence for bad? We have plenty of examples that do that every day. All right? You all walk through the doors of your center and you walk out thinking about your business, your children, your curriculum, your building, decal, all these various aspects that you have on your mind in different times in different places. So these are the things that you're trying to influence on a daily basis at a par as a part of your child care operation. Did I leave anything out? I think I got most of it. Okay. These are the things you're trying to influence. And this is the opportunity here for you to show up available for leadership. Now, a lot comes down to how you look at leadership. You may have had poor, um, uh, poor experiences with leadership in the past, either your own or somebody else's. You may have uh, had good ones. Leadership may be at the top of your priority. It may be at the middle or it might be at the bottom. How you look at leadership, both within yourself and then within others and then within your center, is going to impact the actions that you take to optimize the leadership among every member of your team. This is the response for a lot of people around leadership. They're like, heck no, um, no thanks. Okay, hey, it's a lot of responsibility to be a leader. There are a lot of hard decisions, hard conversations, and it, it's not black and white. Making a lot of these decisions is not black and white, right or wrong. It's like we could choose any one of these things. Which one is the best? A lot of people do number one, they either avoid a leadership position or think they can avoid it, or two, they avoid the responsibility of leadership. They shirk, they hide. And that, that can be very normal and human too. They don't have any experience, they don't know how. I totally get that. If I'm trying to lead in a completely foreign environment, I don't know the people, I don't know the product, 
I don't know the operation, but somebody said, hey, hi, get in there and handle those radios. I was like, I have no clue what I'm doing. See what I'm saying? So here's the thing. Here's the only thing you can dive in, do is to dive into this opportunity of leadership. The water is warm. It's okay. It's okay to learn. It's okay to mistakes, to make mistakes. If you don't give yourself the freedom to make mistakes, that makes you unavailable. First thing, make it okay to make a mistake. Get rid of this like perfection thing we have going on. Oh, I've got to do everything perfect. Every decision I have to make has to be perfect. Every conversation I have has to be perfect. Okay? That's an illusion. It's not even real. Here are the things you should be thinking about when you dive into leadership. What am I trying to influence? Number two, how am I trying to influence it? What impact is my leadership having? That's a question you can ask yourself right now quietly in your mind. What impact is my leadership having? Am I getting the impact that I really want? Is what I'm doing really benefiting? Is it adding value? How would I lead if I'm afraid? Where does fear make you unavailable? Are you afraid to say something? Talk to somebody? Put a team together to solve a problem? If I could change one thing about my leadership, what would that be? How can I proactively develop the leadership skills of others? This is huge, and we're going to talk in a minute about how this really separates leaders apart. So here's your first three commitments. You've got to accept responsibility for the role. You can't hide from that anymore. And people that are serving in leaders under you, you've got to encourage them. Accept the role. You've been chosen to be a leader for a reason. You are already a great leader. We're here to teach you how. Grow and develop leadership mindsets and skills. And the biggest thing that leaders do is they accept accountability. Can you accept accountability right now for what you do and for what you don't do? Or do you look outside to blame somebody because something didn't happen? Guess what? That makes you unavailable for leadership. Become obsessive about being accountable for your thoughts, words, feelings, behaviors, conversations, skills, or the lack of all of those things. And then you'll start to know where you can put your attention on to improve. One thing about leadership, your leadership is only as empowered as you are as an individual, as an individual person. And this is where I do a lot of my individual coaching, okay? Because people come to me trying to solve different problems, trying to do certain things. And it almost always comes down, whether it's a marriage, relationship, a business, to their personal empowerment. Are they self-aware? Do they take responsibility? Are they owning their power? Are they speaking their truth? Do they have stuff from their past that still is holding them back? Okay. Again, we're all human. We're supposed to have this stuff. Are we clear on what we want and do we honor it? Okay. But the thing is, is that all of this stuff has a huge spillover effect directly into what we're trying to do in our daycare center. Huge spillover effect. So pay attention to your personal empowerment and check in with that. Where are the opportunities to grow that? Because I guarantee that if you're unavailable in personal empowerment, the moment you put your attention on those things and really start to uh, grow and develop it, that's going to have a huge spillover effect into your leadership and to how you're showing up available for it. Here's one thing about leadership. You can always tell a good leader. Are they a good follower? If somebody can't follow well, for whatever reason, they would make a poor leader. Because leadership, there's always somebody else to follow. You're following the boss, you're following the state, okay? You're following the teacher, you're working across with other leaders horizontally, okay? There are always opportunities to follow. And hey, I don't have to be low on the totem pole to be the only follower. 
Can an owner follow the leadership role and the leadership of a teacher? Absolutely. Look for those opportunities. In fact, here's a gem. Go up to a teacher or two or three at your center that you know are showing up available for leaders and tell them that. Tell them that you appreciate their leadership, their style, their behavior, their influence, and how their influence is impacting your kids and your center. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. Leaders do all sorts of stuff, okay? They do all of these things. And we don't have time to talk about them all. Which one of these appeals to, to somebody? And we'll talk about it for a second. Listen. Listen. Why is listening so important for a leader to do? Yeah. Exactly. What's that? Attentive. Attentive. Right. People want to feel heard, valued, okay, included. Not only that, but do I know everything? No. Does the owner know everything? Does the director know everything? No. But if we act like we do, see, that's a sign of unavailability. See, ego, I know it all already. You can't tell me anything, so I don't have to listen. No, 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 no. The empowered leader is really paying attention. And what's a good sign of a good listener? After they listen, they ask really good questions. How did you arrive at that? Tell me how you figured it out. Oh, wow, that's brilliant. I never thought of that before. What else are we missing here, people? See what I'm saying? One more. Develop and grow people. Develop and grow people. Tell me more about that. Absolutely. Care is, this is not a bunch of machines. A caring spirit, warmth, compassion. And the more, I can, the more I let you know that you add value. And I can tell you specifically why. Think of reasons why to tell somebody they, or how somebody specifically adds value to your, to, your, to your center. Okay? Great. Okay? But all of these things are just things. And again, you can't run away from these. You've got to dive in and think about each one of things, how you do it, what you want to accomplish, and how to show up available for it. I'm going to talk about John Maxwell's five levels of leadership, because this is really cool. Level one is rights. In other words, people follow you because they have to. Right? You're the one in charge, and if they want to work for you, geez, they have to follow you. Okay? Now, a lot of people think, a lot of leaders think, this is the place to lead from. Hey, as long as you have to work for me, me in Afghanistan, as long as you have to work for me, guys, look, this is the way it's going to be. And it was like, tsh, tsh. that was like a slap across my face. Very limited results with number one. Number two, relationships. People follow you because they want to. In other words, there's just enough respect for somebody to want to follow you. Maybe they like you, maybe they're a friend of yours, maybe it's, you're cool, whatever. Level two. A little bit more results than level one, but not a whole lot. Level three. People follow you because of what you do as an org, uh, for the organization. Now, this is really typical in sales environments. I have some corporate executive coaches who have been promoted solely because they've been high producers high achievers, high performers. They made the sales and somebody goes, oh, you're good at selling this. I'm going to now promote you to manager and you're going to be over these divisions. Well, guess what? They, don't, they do fail. Okay? Or they come up very short. Now, why? No fault of their own. They haven't been in a leader. All they had to do was sell something. Okay? But now they're in a leadership position and they don't know how. So, they can be available in thoughts, words, uh, uh, feelings, and behaviors, but they need a skill. That's where leadership training comes in. Okay? But this is big. A lot of people get to this, and then because they don't have an opportunity to develop and practice real skills, this is where they stay. Level four, people follow you because of what you've done for them. You've invested in them. You've developed them. Leadership development 
be another thing we're going to talk about later on. But I want you to come up and think about both a formal and informal plan that develops leadership skills in your center. Okay? That demonstrates value. In fact, that's the key sign of a good leader is to, you know what, make myself irrelevant. Okay? Because I'm going to train you. I'm going to train you to take my job. Okay? And if somebody asks me, Hyatt, who can take your job? Because we're either promoting you or we're getting rid of you. All right? Who can take your job? I'm going to say. What's your name? Latrice. Latrice. She's got the talent. She's got the skills. She understands the people. She understands the process. And if I can't do that as a leader, that's indicative of something, a missed opportunity to develop people. This is the highest. Level five is about respect. People follow you because of who you are and what you represent. This is at the high, all right? Steve Jobs, Oprah Winfrey, John Maxwell, okay? People who are the creme de la creme because of who they are and what they want. And how did they get there? By doing number four really, really good. But to get to four and five, I got to let go of one, two, and three. I got to get past those. So give this some thought. Think about where you are in this scale. And again, it's okay to be down here. We've all been down there. Think about where you want to be. This is a graph of leadership styles, and there's a lot of different styles out there. I'm running short on time already. These are a lot of different styles, and we won't have time to go into those, all of these. But there's visionary, coaching, affiliate, 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 you all say it. Somebody say it. Affiliative. All right. Democratic. Okay. Processing. Communicating. Leadership can be made up of a bunch of different styles. Start reading a book. Pick up a book. Google leadership. Think about the styles. All right. And we're going to talk more about this because as a part of my business, anybody done a disc assessment? Aren't they fun? They're really brilliant. So for one client downtown in Buckhead, I did a workplace disc assessment for 25 employees. And the disc assessment looks at different styles. Okay? Basically, the idea is that somehow we all break down into one, one primary style. Dominance, influence, steadiness, conscientious. So the dominant is the hard charger. Okay? Decision making, results, results, results. I is the influence. Oh, hip, hip, hooray. We can do this. Come on, team. We got this. Steadiness, they're the sub supporters. I'm here to support you. What do you need? You know, do you need resources? Do you need time? Do you need a presentation? We're here to support. And then the conscientious, they got their heads down in the books. They're looking at the, they're crunching numbers. They're talking spreadsheets. Do not talk to me about spreadsheets. I am not a spreadsheet person. Okay, my style happens to be, what would you guess? DI, DI or? I'm an I, middle of the road, out here on the edge, I. Now, when I did this for the organization, here's what we found. See where all the little black dots are? That's where everybody, that's where each person landed in the organization. So you see that kind of spread? Okay. Now, if you're completely unaware of your own style and you're completely unaware of somebody else's style, how might that impact the way you communicate or work together? Huge impact. Okay. Huge impact. The minute you open the door to more understanding, if I understand myself, the first thing I got to do is under my, understand myself, who I am and why I am the way I am. And then I can go, who are you? You work. How do you operate? And once I do that, I can say, well, if we compare and contrast those styles, there's tidbits of information as to things we can do to improve our relationship, to work closer and more effectively together. So I really recommend a DISC assessment, if not for everybody at your center, for you, okay, for you to take it. And a lot of good insight. There's no right or wrong style. There's no wrong or bad style. Our commanding and directive 
styles beneficial in the right environment? Right. If this building got on fire and I said, get the heck out of the, go to an exit door right now, that's helpful. If I'm in the military and there's a firefight going on and I tell somebody to pick up and move and go over there, is that appropriate? Yes, it is. Is it appropriate in a daycare environment? Okay. When you're having a team meeting. <laughs> there you go. We're out of ratio. That's a good example. I like that example. That's awesome. We're out of ratio. What's going on, people? Who's not paying attention? Okay. And you can say that. We're out of ratio. How did that happen? What can we do to make sure we stay in ratio? See what I'm saying? So the successful leader knows how to dance between dominance, influence, steadiness, conscientious. I know how to dance between commanding, visionary, coaching, because I'm comfortable with myself and I'm paying attention to what my organization really needs and more importantly I'm paying attention to other people. So these are some questions to throw out. Again we're short on time. What styles can I adopt to lead more effectively? How flexible can I be to work well with others? How different would, how different would my leadership be if I understood my own style and your style? Now here's the thing, here's a place where a lot of people are. <laughs> hey, I am the way I am, just, you know, deal with it, get over it. It's, well, I always love when Dr. Phil says, how's that working for you? All right, because it doesn't work. But those are reasons we can be unavailable to change. We can be resistant. We don't know how or we're afraid of who we'll be if we change. Fear, okay. Being on the defensive, it's all very egocentric. That makes you unavailable for leadership. People, let me tell you all, whenever you're trying to do something, make something happen, it's not the fact that you don't have gas. It's not the fact that you don't have this or that. Those things can typically be dealt with and handled. It's the people that's your biggest challenge. Is it right? Because when everybody's on the same sheet of music, when everybody's pulling their weight, when everybody's showing up available, you got alignment, you got power, and you got success. When you have one or two people out of a team of 10, just one or two people can be challenging, there's an opportunity. So when that, think of that one or two person in your organization who is more unavailable than most people are, there's an opportunity. Start to look at them as an opportunity. In fact, here's the thing. What are they teaching you about yourself? Think of the most challenging person in your center, teacher, or even parent, or even child. Instead of look at them going like, what the heck's wrong with that person? <laughs> Say, isn't it interesting, I've attracted this person into my experience. Why is this person here for me? Not for them. Why are they here for me? What are they reflecting back to me? Uh, where's the opportunity for me to learn from them? In fact, even to appreciate them as my teacher. I tell you, I don't have time for another story, but the quickest way to flip the energy around in a relationship and to create change is when you recognize that somebody else is teaching you, even though they're challenging you, and to treat them as if they're teaching you. Show up available for communication. This is big. I could talk for a whole hour on this. Just pay attention to the way you listen and pay attention to the way you talk. Words have power. Whenever you use negative words or limiting words or you need to or you should or we're supposed to, those are poison words. Why? Because people's walls automatically go, don't tell me what I need to do. Don't tell me what I should do. No, say, guys, hey, we really value... Um, uh, respect so because we respect the parents in this organization this is an action that we're going to take in order to make something happen people can't you can't get people to go along if they can't get along 
Okay, and great leaders have models. This is my model. Personal empowerment, executive presence is how you look like and sound like as a leader. Compelling vision, to, can you see the big picture? Critical thinking, how do you think through things? Are you an emotional thinker? Or you do, do you really take a step back from the emotion and say, what's happening? What are all the factors? What's impacting the situation? Situational awareness, not just only what's happening in here, what's happening outside, over there? How is this impacting my decision? What information do I need to get from here? Leadership style. What does it look like, feel like, and sound like? These are three good questions you can ask yourself. What does it look like and feel like? What emotions do I want associated with my style? How do I want to use my emotions and others' emotions for influence? These are a list of values. Big list. Values, characteristics, and qualities that are important in leadership. Just take a look and measure them and uh, pick one that sticks out to you. But again, this is a list, this, a list like this is good for deciding how do I want to show up available? What are my top five values that I'm committed to demonstrating in my leadership style every single day? What values do I want to influence others? We're almost close to wrap up, 30 seconds left. Be intentional about your personal leadership growth, and these are ways to do that. Pay attention to your leadership, personal leadership growth. This is big. Pick up a book. Go to a class. Go to a seminar. Go to a conference. Listen to an audible book. Do something that takes your leadership up to the next level. Secondly, for your center, for center leadership growth, what kind of leadership program do you have in place? Is it formal? informal or non-existent. Take a look at that. There's an opportunity to do that. Encourage. Go back and tell everybody that you're already a great leader and leader, leadership is going to become a predominant subject for us. Take this center to the next level and take our kids to the next level. Take our parents to the next level. John Maxwell, this is his first law. Law of the lid. It's always about raising the lid. We're always right where we're supposed. You are right where you're supposed to be both in your relationships, your marriage, with your kids, with your center, with your business, everything. Think about raising the lid. How did I raise the lid on my leadership today? What can I do differently to take things to the next level? And finally, a quote from Gumby, not really from Gumby. <laughs> do more, add value to people, put on your own ox oxygen mask first, Okay, before you try to help somebody else. But make it a goal to add value. That's a good question you can ask. How am I adding value today to others? Thank you, everybody, for the opportunity to talk today. Let's say show up available one more time. Show up one more time. Show up one more time. Show up awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great day.